Welcome, my fellow Geminis. Uh, this is your reading for October 2024. This is going to be for Gemini Sun, Gemini Moon, which I am, Gemino, ri Gemino, Gemini Rising. Um, you could have planets in the sign of Gemini. Many of you are intuitively guided to a reading now. And, um, you know, I thank you for paying attention to your intuition. I feel like I always have to give that a shout out. Because, you know, I feel like once we really learn to trust our intuition, our life starts to, you know, starts to make sense. Um, we're easily able to make decisions where before we use that fear-based mind, it could be a little bit more difficult. So anyways, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, I read through my spirit guides who connect to your guides. And that's another reason why I'm so happy you pay attention your intuition, I feel like your guides will do whatever they need to do to get a message over to you. So, some of you could be here because you're in love with the Gemini, whether platonically or romantically. Same thing. Remember, you'll probably receive messages. Um, and let's just take a moment just to calm our minds. And while we do that, it's a great time to really ask your own guides to send you confirmation just reading for me you know whether it be through feelings goosebumps angel bumps um you know what you know what you know even if you don't know how you know it that type of thing um letters not you know numbers whatever it may be and then just let it go and let it be let it go and let it be all right, um, so for the month of October, just like September, I, well, in September, I was intuitively guided to do opposites instead of going in order like the birthday month and then the next month, the next month, then, you know, I decided, uh, well, last month, I really felt intuitively guided to do the opposite sign to each sign and I have to say, I love the format. I feel like I get it now. Um, so we're doing it again for October. Um, your opposite sign, Sagittarius, is already done. So, you know. And why why do I feel like it's important? I feel like our opposite sign can many times help complete those parts of us that, you know, that we could be lacking. And vice versa, by the way. So, like polar opposites, and remember, there's always something to learn from that polar opposite. Um, and one more thing we're going to do, instead of doing the major arcanas that we did for September for the bullet points, we are going to use the Romance Angels. Um, this is an oracle deck, and um, yeah, we're just using it as bullet points. And one of the reasons why I decided to really bring it out in this for this month is our readings always somewhere along the line turn to love. So I thought not just love, you know, life, but love is always seems to always be a part of it. So I thought, well, let's get a head jump on that and let's use the romance angels for our, um, our bullet points into the reading. So we'll do those after we, Get some words of wisdom from Mother Mary. We are going to use the Gilded Tarot. You know, I just find that I love clarifying with this deck. We're going deeper. So that's why I use it often. Though I did bring out a second deck. Um, it's called this, the Divine Celestial Tarot. Um, they're a little bit smaller, but we'll use them. I've been using them in a lot of the readings, and um, I like them. I like them. So for your main spread, we're going to use the Universal Tarot. Again, these are the same decks that I used for Sagittarius, your opposite. And let's go ahead and officially open up this reading. Bring that lid down. There we go. Oh, I wanted to start with Mother Mary. So hang on there, romance. All right, Mother Mary, my beautiful Geminis, 
any words of wisdom moving into the month of October? And moving forward from there. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Well, I'm not going to say never do I turn down a card from Mother Mary, but if they're face up, I don't turn them. I don't turn them away. Um, but look at what you got. Love. Love. And it came up by itself. So I feel like, you know, it wanted to be recognized for itself. Love. Love is the answer to all of my questions. Love. And, you know, I feel like there's different levels to love. You know, some of us can meet that love of our life early in life. But for many of us, it's like, you know, we have to go through the chopping block almost. Um, but I really hope this is speaking about ultimate love for you. So we have love. We have self-respect. I honor and love myself through my healthful actions. Self-respect. Devotion. As I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God, I am clear about what to do next. And maybe why I talked about your intuition so much. Health. My prayers for healing miracles have been heard and answered. Health. And last, certainly not least, is blessings. Beautiful. And I love how blessings is mirroring love. Again, doesn't have to be romantic love. Blessings. Today, I count my blessings, small and large, and I notice the new gifts that come to me from God. I notice the new gifts that come to me through God. All right, we're going to leave all these out. Um, I'm probably not going to read them all from the book at the end, but maybe love and blessings. We'll see. Let's see how the reading goes. All right, let's go ahead and... Now, bring out the Romance Angels. You know, I had this deck when um, I was in Rhode Island. Um, but then when I moved in with Sam, oh my God, it's going on five years. Holy crap. Um, I could only bring two suitcases with me. So I left a lot behind. Um, actually, I just gave it to my daughter. I've been doing that my whole life, by the way. It's interesting. I noticed that about me, like almost like I'm a gypsy. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'll accumulate material things and then a situation comes up, you know, an opportunity and I don't have the option of bringing everything with me. So I eliminate, sold, got rid of, gave away. Um most of my material belongings, and I've done that at least three or four times in my life. Interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and give him a cut. One of the main reasons, by the way, I cut um, any new deck I'm using or, you know, opening up with a deck is really to signal to my guides that I'm ready. It's like my my signal to my guides. All right, Gemini. You know, Gemini, I remember your reading last month, and I felt like you had a few people coming in. Look at this, true love. Matter of fact, I remember the icon I used. You had two different... People coming on both sides of you. True love. This is a romance of a lifetime. Well, I'll take it. I mean, especially with Mother Mary sending out love as your very first card. True love. This is a romance of a lifetime. Hmm. 
We'll see how the main spread um, verifies that, but I'll take it. Wow, it's wedding. And I have to tell you, I think Sagittarius also got this in the same position. I could be wrong, but I do feel like it was it's a reading I didn't do too long ago, so it would either be Sagittarius, Taurus, or Scorpio. Wedding. Well, I mean true love. The situation involves marriage. Look at this engagement. Now do you know? I don't know if it's a good thing that I remind you of other readings, um, but I just have to say that in I did a reading for love and it was no contact. Someone who just like shut down contact or they had a habit of doing that. And wedding and engagement came out in the exact same position. So interesting. Excuse me one for one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a knock at my door. Um, interesting because, you know, Sam and I have this act, so to speak, that when my doors close, that means I'm in a reading. Um, it's not that I would ever say you can't. Like I always say, if you need me, knock on the door. I can always put the video on pause, but it was interesting because he brought in a scholarship that he had gotten for a redden Oh, I forgot the name. Or oh my gosh, the guy who makes popcorn. Um, Orville. You know who I'm talking about. Anyway, he was showing me that, and that was quite interesting. It was a lot of years ago. But anyways, anyways, I was saying, like, in that no contact reading, they had wedding and engagement connected. So... The reason I tell you these things because let's just say that's your situation. Then, you know, it could certainly help you to watch it, see where it went because it, it went somewhere, let's just say, completely unexpected. We'll look at this past life relationship. Now, I know Scorpio had this in their reading. Um, past life relationship mirrored by true love which mother mary sent us out love look at this you know i feel like what this is saying maybe not all people have met their true love yet Um, it definitely would represent soulmates, if not twin flames, because it's definitely showing that this is not like a one lifetime type of love. And interesting because you have known each other before. I feel like soulmates, when they meet, there's like this, there's this like familiar energy about each other. It's like, I know you. Though I don't know, like, but I haven't met you in this lifetime, but I feel like I know you. So, interesting. True love, wedding, engagement, past life relationship. Okay. We'll take it. All right, let's bring in the main spread. And again, I'm using the Universal Tarot. Same deck as your opposite. Let's give it one more shuffle. Everything's pre-shuffled, by the way. I think I said that already. All right, Gemini, if you're ready. We have the Knight of Wands, followed by the King of Pentacles. Can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be, though. Um, you know, if it's a Virgo, you definitely share Mercury. 
it's interesting because this King of Pentacles has a Knight of Wands on the other side of it. And he's looking, I just realized he's looking right back at that Knight of Wands. And I often feel like a knight is sent by a queen or a king. And I feel like they will complete their mission. So this knight is about bringing in, let's say, some type of inspiration. Um, something that's passionate. Something that's desirable to your heart, no doubt. Um, and the king pentacle looking right back at it. And I'm seeing this big pentacle on his lap. It could be a job offer. Definitely feels like, you know, whatever energy he has coming towards you, it feels of a positive nature. So let's keep going. Hmm. The Five of Pentacles. Interesting. Five of Pentacles means something happened outside of your control. Um, temporarily, it can feel like a difficult energy. It is change. It is number five. Um, but in the same breath, I feel like, um, I don't know why I always feel like in the Five of Pentacles that I'm heading towards, like, my soulmate tribe, but I just don't know it yet. Some of you, you know, this could be a job loss, especially with the King of Pentacles here. Though, I feel like if it's a job loss, it's also a job off being offered. The king has his back to this five of pentacles. Almost like he has nothing to do with it. But realizes that you are going through some type of a change. We have the seven of cups. So, question is being posed to you. It's interesting because um, it seems to be happening like... Like something, maybe love. Uh, it's something of emotional nature coming towards you where you need to make a decision. But yet, the Five of Pentacles energy is so close to that. So, you know, it could be something that happens um, during a period of time when you really least expect it. I want to at least say that. Like, I feel like you least expect that you even have this option. I think I'm going to take five across and then five below. Because I want to know more about this decision. This choice. We have the Queen of Wands. Interesting, the Queen of Wands is mirroring the Knight of Wands. So... You know, let's, because I feel like you're all people in a reading, unless I really feel it differently. Like, I don't feel you're this king, but I do potentially feel you are this queen. And this queen is someone who is really intuitively guided. Like, she definitely trusts her intuition. She's not a fear-based energy. She moves according to, like, her desires, her passions. Um... So I feel like this is you, like, ultimately making a decision. Seven of Cups can talk about a period of time that feels a little chaotic. But yet, and listen, I guess no decision is an answer at the same time. Like, if I choose none of the Cups, well, then that is my answer. Yet the Queen of Wands coming out next makes me feel like you do choose a Cup. You are ready to move forward. Definitely feels like you you had the ability to put something behind you. Again, something that maybe you didn't even ask for. Um, you know, like an ending that came unbeknownst to you. But nonetheless, here it is. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Two of Wands. I'm going to step onto this new path. I'm going to see where it takes me. Two of Wands to me is, you know, the willingness to at least step forward in this new direction. 
interesting is it's coming under the Knight of Wands. So again, this knight bringing some type of inspired action. And I'm saying action because I feel like you do, you will have to take action. You know, again, it's like I can choose none of the cups. And that is my answer. But it kind of looks like you are choosing a cup. And then you're putting a lot of trust behind that. You know, and I don't feel like you're even saying like, I need to know exactly where this is going. I'm just going to, I feel it. It's something you feel. And therefore, something that I feel like you're willing to at least step into. We have the five of wands coming under this king. Interesting. Okay. So five of wands is um, battling type energy. It can be a lot of ego. It's definitely where um, there's drama. And, you know, I, I feel like in the five of wands, I have one or two options here. I can either get caught into that drama or I can rise above it or maybe even leave it. Again, this five of pentacles. Now I'm wondering about this king because it has the five of pentacles on one side. So something that's happening outside of my control. And then the five of wands underneath him. So a lot of drama. Um, can be bad communication. You know, this could tie you even back to, to August when Mercury was in retrograde. Though in no way do I feel like that's what you're moving towards. We have the Nine of Wands, the Reflector. This is someone who you know, I feel like it's bold enough to look back at, let's say, at least the last chapter in their life. And it's really to understand it. Um, but it's also to understand how much one has grown over that. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, so it's clearly showing the five of pentacles, something happening outside of your control. It's like the energy of feeling thrown onto the cold. But then also next to the five of wands, you know, so knowing my part within that, I feel like that's really what the nine of wands is about, is knowing myself. It's also about how you have grown. You know, I call this person my spirit warrior because it is their experiences that have taught them well. And I feel like when the nine of wands comes out, it, it almost like takes away any fear that I'm going to repeat something because I feel like in this energy, I've learned everything I need to know. Nines are about reflection. But, you know, I want to add the word final reflection. You know, and I feel like it's simply to say to yourself or to recognize, like, you know, who you are today. And I don't know, would you be this person if you hadn't gone through some of these experiences? Mm, another king, king of swords, because so, that certainly could be you, male or female, by the way. Um, so Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. King of swords, the communicator. It's coming under that seven of cups. Kind of makes me feel like the King of Swords is posing this question, like offering something. We have, look at this, another King, King of Cups. Interesting. Um, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Two Kings and a Queen. Though we really have three Kings. 
This king's kind of separating himself from the pack. You know, and how interesting because I remember in your last reading where um, I really felt you had two different people coming towards you. And how interesting because it feels like a continuation of that. You know, I feel you're the queen. And I feel the kings, male or female, by the way, I feel like they're two separate people. And I feel like that's part of the choice here. Am I going to choose this king of swords? Am I going to choose this king of cups? King of cups is mirroring the two of wands. All right, well, let's look at the bottom of the deck. Whoa, hello. Hello, marriage. Speaking about the marriage card, here it is, or wedding. Um, I call it the commitment card. Interesting, it's on the bottom of the deck, though. Queen of Swords underneath that. Interesting. It's like this Queen of Swords cut ties with this King of Swords, or the other way around. And... You know, did they do it for you? Maybe. Maybe. And then all of a sudden I'm picking up like, you know, there's much more to this. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like you've been in this period of time, which I feel now is ending or has ended um, of what may have felt like a lot of hardships, a lot of changes. Um, you know, you have two fives here that could certainly talk about two different changes. One being in your money. Maybe the other one is in love. Um, or maybe it's all around your money. And some of you, I feel like you may have cut ties with someone and listen, maybe you were, you were in a committed relationship with them, but for whatever the reason, it didn't pan out. Interesting how both these kings look like they're ready to get out of their seats. You know, as things sit right, right now, if this is talking about love, then I feel like it's this Queen of Wands and the Knight, or I'm sorry, the King of Cups. And um, it's almost like picking up from your last reading, like potentially two people coming in. And I feel like the third person is the one who has caused some disruption in your life. You know, like some drama. All right, let's bring the Gilded Tarot in and let's just get right into this. Figure out who all these people are and what they want to do with you. We have the Hermit, part of Virgo. Um, you know, it's interesting because it is a card of Virgo, and we do have the King of Pentacles here. But I have to say, I feel like this is talking about, like, the situations you've been through. And the Hermit's emerging from the cave, which means that, you know, I probably have gone through the Dark Knight of the Soul, and I'm coming out the other end wiser you know i feel like this is also when someone is just like the nine of wands like bold enough to look within to really understand especially on a spiritual level especially because we have past lives here 
past life relationship. You know, that can be confusing. You don't even have to know it. But you feel it. You feel it. So anyways, this hermit is shining his beacon of light outwardly. And it is a nine. Some of you may have been putting like single statuses up and someone paying attention to that. You know, I also love this. Let's say that you lost a job and maybe you're being inspired like on a brand new path and it could be like spiritually inclined. But again, it's because you've learned these things. I feel like the hermit is really in the dark night of the soul is seeking the light. And what the hermit realizes is that I am the light. I am my own savior. I can save myself. Another thing that that lantern is illuminating is a snake down here. It's almost like a guarantee to yourself that, you know, if anyone comes to you in that type of energy, you'll know it. But this the Knight of Wands again. Now, right over the king, we have the page of pentacles over the five of pentacles. And look at this. We have the seven of cups over the seven of cups. Does it feel like two people mirroring each other? It kind of does. Because we have two knights of wands now. Two sevens of cups. Two people making a decision. Page of Pentacles right before that, over the Five of Pentacles. Again, that energy where something may have happened that, you know, you didn't ask for, but it, nonetheless, it happened. I feel like the Page of Pentacles is the ability to learn from that. Like there's something that that, that period of time, that hardship really has taught me. And maybe it's like my own strength and how I can bounce back. Some of you, it's like, you know, you could have lost a job and now you're doing your own thing. And, you know, I know that feeling. And, as, you know, especially if it's like working for yourself because now you are the boss. But it's interesting how I feel like two people are mirroring each other at the same time. So let's keep going. Look at this, two of wands, two of wands, right over the queen of wands. You know, this is you saying yes to something. This is you choosing one or even more of those cups. And this is your willingness to move into it, whatever it may be. And again, boy, do I feel like two people are mirroring each other, which makes complete sense when you see a, a past life relationship. You know, some of the conversation that may happen when you come together is, you know, you're talking about your lies and you're like, wow, we have so many similarities. I feel like both of my people here right now are, are, Let's just say everybody on the table feels spiritually inclined. So they've learned a lot. Hello, lovers. So first of all, your major arcana. What a card to come out when you also have past life lovers and true love and wedding and engagement. You know, and I often feel in this image, first of all, the meaning of the card is ahead of a hard decision. But because it's coming over the two of wands, I feel like the decision has been made. And I often feel in this image, just how you can see like the divine feminine's energy and the masculine's energy. It's not quite reached her yet, but she can feel it. 
She feels it. She feels that passion. It's interesting because I feel like not only does she feel it, but so does the masculine. We have the devil, part of Capricorn. This can talk about temptations. You know, it's interesting. It doesn't show it in this deck, unfortunately. But a lot of times in the devil's image, you'll see the lovers. But you'll see the lovers being influenced by the devil. So an illusionary energy for these lovers that they really have to break free from. And I get a feeling that this is talking about like past life, but maybe even this lifetime. And then we have, look at this, the Four of Wands again. And then the Knight of Swords over the King of Swords. Interesting. I just get a feeling that some of you were in a relationship and it didn't go well. You know, it may, have, it may have started out great, but I feel like it turned to, like, again, I want to say, it's reminding me of that no contact reading. And it could be, you know, definitely could be also someone who, well, has they, has has evolved themselves. Hmm. Some of you may ask your may ask a question of how do I keep picking the wrong people? How do I keep ending up with the type of person who just ends up hurting me in the long run? Well, I mean this in the most kindest of ways, but I feel like you have to look at your own reflection because you could have been tempted to like, you know, people who have a lot of drama. But then again, you know, remember in the beginning, they could be as charming as hell, um, but give them time to reveal themselves and they'll reveal exactly who they are. So I do feel like that's part of the realization, like, you know, not to put the blame on you, but just to say, like, okay, just like Mother Mary says, self-respect, right? Or like Oprah, when I know better, I do better. So I do feel like, you know, there was an end to a committed relationship. And again, it may not have gone your way or even felt like it was in your favor. But I feel like it was definitely in your favor. And maybe only time reveals that. You know, the not the hermit can certainly speak about a period of time. But nonetheless, you're feeling the energy within this lovers. You're feeling it. You're feeling it almost before it even comes in. You know, it just kind of reminds me of like. And I hate to always talk about my story, but it does remind me a little bit of, you know, like Sam and I, I was in a very weak moment. I had just broken up with someone after 25 years of being together and literally it was two weeks single and I was just having this weak moment, which I very seldom have being a Virgo. It's like, I have no problem being by myself, but I was having this weak moment and I picked up the phone and called the person I had just broken up with um, to see if he wanted to come over. Well, then my call waiting came in, and it was Sam, the very first love of my life, true love, true love. And I hung up from the first person and took Sam's call, and then it just went on from there. Now we're, we live together. 
And I'm only saying that because I can feel the similarities in there, right? Like something feels like it's happening that I feel is going to be very surprising and very good, but it may happen at a period of time when you're feeling a little weak. You know, I feel like saying that if you've been sad about a certain commitment that just didn't work out, you know, they probably didn't give you respect, um, probably full of drama. And, you know, I do need to ask myself, did I allow myself to get pulled into that drama? And listen, once I ask myself these questions, then I know myself. And when I know myself, I do better. So I feel like this is saying, like, this isn't the end for you, you know, as it relates to love. And not just love, but even just in your life. I feel like things are evolving, you know, like, like blessings are coming in that you do not expect. And I do feel like one of them is your true love. So... Whatever I lost within this committed relationship, I am regaining it. I'm just regaining it with someone else. Now, could it be the same person? Well, I'm not going to leave that off the table, but what I would tell you is definitely give them enough time so you know whether like this is someone who is able to make that commitment to you. Because even... The um, the romance angels are talking about a commitment. You know, they're not just talking about, oh, love's going to walk in a the door. They're talking about an actual commitment. Wow. Another king. So we have all the kings on the table now. King of Wands. Queen of Wands is right there. I mean, you want to talk about confusing. You might have a few people coming your direction. And it's interesting because that's the exact same thing I felt in your last reading. Um, and this may be the continuation of it. Like, this may be when you actually now connect to this energy it feels like it's coming through communication you know so listen i may have told my story because some of you may receive unexpected phone calls unexpected text you know unexpected communication but I love that the Four of Wands is right beside it. And I love that the Page of Pentacles is here too, because I feel like what it's saying is, you know, these hardships that I've been through, these things that happen to me outside of my control, I can overcome them. I can learn from them. And maybe that's all I was meant to do. Maybe that helps bring me to my real spiritual self. Because again, I feel like this is not just about one person who. Um, and it doesn't even mean that you claim that I'm, a, I'm this spiritual person, but it's how you live now. All right. Well, let's go right below them since we have all these people on the table. And it's interesting, let's just say that all these people are heading your direction and all posing a question to you. I feel like this is when you really want to trust your intuition because there, there's going to be something different about one of them. And one of those things may be, again, that you lived similar lives, similar experiences, hardships, the things you had to overcome. But I feel like each one did. And that may be why now, maybe the timing is right. We have the two of swords. It kind of showed up in reverse, but um, two swords. Well, 
coming under the lover is a head over heart decision. Two Swords, though, speaks about a blindfold. And the blindfold is just something that I may not want to admit. I may not want to see. You know, it's some type of truth that, you know, I feel like it, it's better if I just don't even know. But I don't really feel like that's the case. Um, it's a two, not the eight. So it's not that big of a deal. I feel like, you know, for some of you, the question may have been like, well, how do I keep ending up with the same type of energies? You know, the type of people who just keep hurting me or that. That's where I feel like you just need to look within. And maybe it's a hard thing to do sometimes. Um, but have I been pulled back to the same type of energy over and over again? And they never disappoint. They always hurt me in some way. This reading is not about you going back. Um, even though, again, past life, you are going back. But this is not about going back to someone who... I feel like has completely disrespected you. Um, really quite the opposite. And again, I feel like this person not only made life difficult for you, but also was probably full of drama, full of ego. And um, I feel like simply what I got to do is I cannot allow myself to get pulled into that energy. I got to rise above it. And that's really what the Queen of Wands does. She rises above the drama. But two of swords is here. And I guess that would be a little bit of real life. You know, a, a love can show. And fear can raise his ugly head. We have the hangman. Almost like er, putting a stop to this king. It can also be you putting a stop to it. You know, the hangman seeking wisdom. Wisdom on my next steps. But it's interesting that you have the energy of temptation over that five of wands, that drama. And honestly, I just feel for the majority of you, you're just simply asking the question, how do I know? How do I know I won't end up right back where I was? Well, again, because now you know you. We have the Three of Swords. Three Swords. Um, mirrored by the Five of Pentacles with the Page of Pentacles over it, coming over the Nine of Wands, Three Swords, you know, can certainly talk about th maybe I gave someone three chances, and maybe now it's like three chances and you're out. It's definitely showing that your heart was broken. Um, and that may be part of, like, why making a decision moving forward is a little bit more difficult. Like, I almost feel like you could say no to this in the beginning. And I feel like if that's the case, it's because the Three of Swords energy, you know, some of the pain still remains, let's say. I feel like if I was speaking about you to someone else, I would say... They have no interest in going back. They have no interest in, you know, being with someone who's just going to break their heart. You know, if they're going to be with someone, they want someone who, like, will legitimately love them, um, show them the love, speak that love. All right, we had a card. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. King of Cups again. King of Cups coming over the Knight of Swords. Sitting right next to the King of Cups. 
This king of cups is marrying the seven of cups. Who's also mar that's also marrying the seven of cups. I mean, just what we needed, another king. We have the Four of Cups. All right. So the Four of Cups speaks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. You know, I'm not quite satisfied where I said but Four Cups really speaks about this one cup that's coming in. And this is a cup of love. I feel like it's coming from the hand of God. And sometimes in the image, you'll notice someone looking at it where this person is. And this is about learning to use your spiritual discernment, you know, and you have the hermit as the first card here with the Knight of Wands over it. So I feel like you have that ability now. Like using your spiritual discernment to decide maybe whose cup I'm going to take. It is mirroring the two of swords, almost like it's saying, you know, you're not quite satisfied with your life anyways. Why not just rip off this blindfold? We have, well, hello, Ace of Pentacles. That means something is coming into your physical world. And then the King of Swords again. Holy Kings. Holy Kings. Now, I kind of feel like this is you. And again, male or female. It could just mean that you've been more in your masculine energy than your feminine energy. Which, by the way, I'm in my masculine energy a lot. You know, 60% of the time. Um... So understand that we have both masculine and feminine within us. But this is literally saying that someone's coming into your life. And the Ace of Pentacles to me is like a seed. And this seed, I can either love it, nurture it, give it to sun and the tending that it needs and that's what will grow it and grow it and make it blossom or with the two of swords here i can just kind of pass it up let it dry up and die and i feel like the only reason you would do that is because you're still uncertain as it relates to let's just say people but really, I feel like love. But I feel like a lot of that is based on my past. You know, again, Mother Mary, love, and then mirroring blessings, blessings coming into your life. The Ace of Pentacles means it's like physically coming into your life. I feel like this little bug keeps bugging me. Hmm. So many kings. Page of Swords on the bottom. Got that Eight of Swords underneath that. Hmm. All right, we're going to bring in the Celestial Tarot, and we're going to go deeper yet, especially because we have all these people on the board. I want to know a little bit more about them. So, I feel like the King of Pentacles, though surrounded by some pretty difficult energy, I have to say, 
Now, is it because, again, I do feel like you're mirroring someone. Is it because they themselves have also been through the same type of energy? Because this king is looking back at the night. But I feel like both of you are kind of sharing the hermit's energy. So I just want to take a card or two. And then the Knight of Wands coming directly over him. We have Temperance. Temperance. Well, there's your opposite sign. Their major arcana. But this is patience. But then also divine timing. So patience in divine timing. I don't feel like temperance will come out if this was a bad thing. So I feel I feel more than anything this king. Uh, stupid. I have a little gnat or something keeps hitting me. Um, but anyways, I feel like this king more than anything is the one who's mirroring you. And I mean that as in I feel like they also were drawn to like drama filled people. They also have, you know, felt thrown out into the cold. I could definitely feel like I definitely feel like this king could have shut down for a while, like just shut down their emotions. Um, but in the same time, I feel like it's what they needed to do. You know, um, and then I feel like there was no wasted time because I feel like this person, they themselves have become, let's just say, again, spiritually inclined. It's almost like this king is saying, I realize the energy that I've been attracted to, but I also realize that that energy has brought me nothing but hardship and pain. So I don't want to repeat that. Okay. We have the Knight of Wands again. So the Knight of Wands all around this king now. Hmm. Okay, so I'm feeling kind of good about this king, to be honest. Um, you know, could it, been, could it be someone that you were with in this lifetime who's now had these realizations? Of course. I'm not going to take that off the table, but what I will say is I feel like it would be very clear to you, though, in the same breath of whether this, if this is someone coming back whether they have evolved or not. And again, that may be why we're seeing the twos like like stepping into it, but also giving people the chance to reveal to you who they are, their truthful selves. Um, but what I'm really feeling is that it's talking about potentially two people who, you know, I'm not going to say haven't met in this lifetime, but I don't feel like have been together. Um, and again, that similarities like this similar path that we've taken. All right, let's come down and look at this whole block of kings. And we have two kings of cups. We have two kings of swords, a king of wands. You know, I don't mind seeing the king and the queen of wands there connected um, because it could talk about, you know, th these kings don't have to be all their separate signs. It could be like different sides to the same person uh, because I, because all of a sudden I'm feeling like this queen and king, they do have a lot of similarities and they are sharing that two of wands. And then the two of wands followed. So 
speaking of, what's that say? Oh, the Five of Wands. Hmm. The Six of Cups. The Queen of Wands again. Three. I think it's a Six of Swords, but it looks like the Three of Swords. And then the Hangman. All right, so really what I'm looking at is the King of Wands right now. So this King of Wands has his own drama, right? His own Five of Cups, or Five of Wands, I'm sorry. Um, but also the energy of leaving that. So, interesting because you both have the hangman. And the hangman is coming over the five of wands. Well, here, we have the five of wands right here. But then we have this person, like, making these realizations within their life. Like, what's toxic to me? Who's toxic to me? What kind of energy has been toxic to me? And then they're doing something about it. They're leaving it. You know, and then you get the six of cups, so... That energy of, you know, treasured memories, interesting. And then the Queen of Wands comes comes back out again. So I feel like there's nothing to fear with this king. And this is probably why there's different kings for different people. Okay. So I feel nothing bad about this king. Really what I feel is similar energy as yours. Let's come down and look at the two kings of swords and the um, two kings of cups. We have the strength card. Strength card is the card of Leo. Um... But really, the strength card to me, it's the number eight. So it does speak about a new beginning. But this is someone who has gone within, you know, understands like the energy that they've been tempted towards. It's, re it's really about learning about ourselves, like all parts of ourselves. And I feel like this person really, um, the word I'd give them is courageous. We have... The Nine of Pentacles. And then we have, look at this, the Ten of Pentacles. Interesting. Again, now we're looking at these kings, the King of Cups and the Kings of Swords. And it starts with the Strength card. So again, I feel like everywhere we look, there's people having these realizations of just energy they've been that has not worked out for them they've been tempted into and the different approaches that each and every one of them have taken you know the the strength card means i've taken a deep dive within but then the nine of pentacles independent and i like that like I, you know to me a nine means that someone's coming to you um not connected to another and then it very quickly moves into the Ten of Pentacles. Interesting. You'd think that came over the King of Pentacles, but it didn't. It came over these kings. So I feel like, again, these are just different people for different people. And each of them are arriving, um, you know, in their own ways. All right. Well, let's... Now look, all right, so what I wanted to look at was this Ace of Pentacles that's right next to these kings also. Wow, we got a lot. We have the Magician, the Manifester. Manifesting that Ace of Pentacles, well, there it is. We have the King of Swords again. We have the Eight of Cups, much like the Strength card. 
right? This Eight of Cups talks about looking within one's emotional house and finding clarity within that. We have Seven of Wands. We have the Three of Swords, interesting. The Three of Cups. Four of Wands, there's that commitment again. The Eight of Swords. The Moon, there's the Feminine Energy. The Page of Wands, my little risk taker. And then, Hello Lovers. Wow, so that was a lot of cards. However, I feel like they're telling their own little story. So it's definitely showing us that some of these kings, it, it feels like each and every one of these kings. And that's why I feel like it's different people, you know, like different people are showing up for different people. Um, because everywhere I look, each and every one of them had has had their issues they've had to overcome. Um, the same way I feel like, well, it's bringing out the king of swords. Um but it's also saying that this King of Swords himself has been through the Three of Swords and even the Eight of Swords, which is a self-created prison. And I feel like it because, you know, they were able to, like, really examine their lives and understand, like, not only their own part in it, but even the people they surround themselves with. Because it feels like the magician's energy is also surprising them, you know, with the three cups of joy, a reason to celebrate. And then it moves right into the four of wands, which again is that commitment. Well, we have true love. We have the commitment of a wedding. Um, though, you know, when I say wedding, I just feel commitment, period. The engagement, period. And this past life, life, this past life love. And ultimately this king ends up with the lovers. So it's almost like there's the masculine energy that the feminine was feeling. Because it ends with the feminine's energy. And the page of wands, again, my little risk taker. So someone reach, you know, I feel like, I feel like you have different kings slash queens reaching out, but yet I feel like they've all had bold movement in their lives. I feel like for the majority, they didn't ask for it. It just happened, but it's also because of the people that I allowed in my life, you know, the people I surrounded myself with. And I feel like each one is having that realization that if I don't cut out certain energies, then my life is never going to change. Um, because I don't feel like anybody here, you know, maybe for a time being is saying, like, I'm just going to put love on hold. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because I feel like love is still going to show. Um, and you may have a different perspective of it at that point. You know. It's tying, well, really, all the kings right back into the lover's energy. And I definitely feel like the lover's is talking about the past life love. And true love is talking about this lifetime. So feeling it before it even arrives. First and foremost, it feels like the clearing of the past. The understanding, what can I learn from it? How much have I evolved because of it? You know, the willingness not to let people take you down for too long. I, you know, I don't know how many times I've said it in my own life. Like, you know, you leave a relationship and you're like, that's it. I'm not going to love again. I'm done with it. And then, boom, somebody else shows up in your life. Uh, 
Okay. Um, let's pick all this up. Because I feel like what I want to do, even though this is going to make your reading a little bit longer, I feel like because there's so many people on the board, we need a little bit more clarity. So, let's go ahead and pick this up. And let's actually pick this up. And I want to leave the lovers. Um, should have left the Four of Wands out also. But let's pick this up too. And let's just surround some cards. So. Let's bring out true love and let's put it the way it happened and past life relationship, knowing that wedding and engagement is also included in that. But I know it's talking about these lovers. So I just kind of want to surround that energy. Um, let's use the Gilded Tarot. And also, let's not forget Mother Mary. Love. Love is the answer to all my questions. Self-respect. I feel like that's what a lot of people have been finding. Devotion. Well, this feels like something I could definitely devote myself to. Health. That could also speak about, you know, during the difficult periods, um, it taking an effect on you. But I feel like this is the opportunity to bring you back. And then blessings. Today, I count my blessings small and large, and I notice the new gifts that come to me from God. All right, so we're just going to give this a couple shuffles. And I'm just going to kind of surround it because there were so many people on the table. Give him a cut. All right. Hello, Temperance. Divine timing. Patience. You're opposite. You know, the one thing I love about temperance, uh, I love many things, but one of the things is temperance can remind you that you can just let go. Like, like don't try to control what's coming into your life instead just be open right trusting in divine timing especially if i am looking for that one true love you know this feels like it's saying that it's coming your way it's, it's but it's coming in divine timing We have the Six of Cups on the other side. Interesting. And then we have the Page of Swords above it. So, Six of Cups right next to past life relationship. That makes sense. You know, I often feel in this type of energy, I could have been with quite a few different people, right? Maybe even made commitments to other people, but probably never felt completely fulfilled. You know what I mean? Like there was always something lacking and maybe I couldn't even put a name to it. This definitely is, the Six of Cups is the perfect energy to come out next to past life lovers. And 
six relating right back to the lovers themselves. It, it could certainly feel like fulfillment that you just have never known yet. Page of Swords, well, that can speak about someone of a younger time, yes. But to me, a page is really what's in the atmosphere. So, communication is in the atmosphere. We have the world, the next chapter. The next chapter. You know, that's why we saw all those fives. Because fives really speak about change. That's why we saw those nines. Final reflection. The world to me is really the most spiritual time in your life. So it makes sense that the hermit was ushering in a lot of this energy. Right? Like things that I know that I know. That I know that I know. Don't ask me how I know them. I just know them. You know, it's that type of energy. And it's definitely signifying that this is probably going to be for the rest of your life. You know, and I say probably because I have to consider free will. We have mm, the two swords. And then we have Four of Pentacles. You know, what is temperance waiting on? Because remember, temperance is about patience. But I feel like a lot of times it's the universe being patient on up for us. They're waiting for this blindfold to be t to like to be ripped off. It's almost like temperance is saying, I can sit here and wait for as long as you need me to. But until that blindfold's pulled off, there's really no reason for me to come in yet. You know, it's like you need to be, your eyes need to be wide open. You need to be able to recognize this for what it is. And even in the Two of Swords, I still feel like it'd be hard to deny the energy. Some, some of you, this could relate to someone that you've known, that you do know, like from, let's just say, your childhood, your childhood years. Again, it doesn't mean that you um, had a relationship with them, but there would be something that stands out in your mind. Okay. Well, there's that Eight of Swords. Seven of Cups. King of Pentacles is back. And then the Moon. All right. Well, let's just face it. Part of the fear of love is really not knowing where it's going. You know, do I invest my time? And if I do, how do I know that it's going to pay off? Well, I feel like this is saying um, you've got to be willing to take that chance here. I feel like this is an energy where you want to take, you know, be willing to at least take a chance. Um, and it's interesting because I feel like temperance, you know, temperance really is the one who makes sure both of the cups of the soulmates is equally filled. And it's interesting because I feel like one might have the Eight of Swords and one might have the Two of Swords. So one, I just got to break free from, you know, walls that I've built up that I feel are protecting me. And another is I just got to rip off that blindfold. You know, if nothing else, it's a saying that this is energy you should be able to feel before it even arrives. You know, like, I just feel, I feel blessings coming my way. 
I love the world above past life relationships because this is talking about it now coming into this lifetime and it being your next chapter. And again, it's connected to the lovers. And with temperance here, I feel like, you know, it's letting go of any fears. And even like, sometimes we may say like, I need to know if this is going to be my, my, you know, are you my true love? And I feel like you know that through energy. So you've got to open yourself up to that energy at the same time. You've got to take a chance. Got to take a chance. And I feel like even though the moon can represent uncertainties, it can also be very dreamy type energy. Just take one right in the middle. Look at this judgment. So something made me pull one more card and judgment comes out. Well, so where temperance talks about patient, patience, judgment talks about present moment. Like I need your attention in the present. This is where I send your signs. This is about a rebirth and it makes sense with the world here. And all in divine timing. You know, it's like, it's like the spiritual teams are calling these lovers to the current moment. Like, get your head out of the past. Even if this is a past, again, life relationship, it is. But this is about this lifetime and what you're going to create together now. You know, judgment to me is is a great reason just to relax within this. And so is temperance. Like, just relax in it and, you know, just put my foot in the water. So you're being called to the present moment so that this rebirth can take place. Coming over true love and past life relationships. Looking right down at the lovers, but also... Connected not only to the world, but also to this page of swords. So I feel like that's, it's given us a clue of how it's going to enter our life through some type of communication first. And again, some of you may know who this person is. So it could be like reconnecting with someone on your social media that maybe you haven't spoken to in a long time. I really don't feel like this is someone who, um, I mean, you could have been in a relationship with them, but I don't feel like they're the ones who caused all that drama and pain. And let's just say it is, then this is someone who is completely and totally evolved. And I feel like you will be able to feel that. I mean, let's face it. This is looking at both sides of the lovers and each of them has their own, you know, let's just say work to be done. Each of them has their own fears to overcome. Um, and each of them has to learn to trust in divine timing and even allow themselves to have these rebirths, right? The willingness to follow the signs, the signs will guide you. Like the signs will guide these lovers together. And I feel like that I can count on. It's just what will I do once it shows up? First of all, I feel like, again, it just will be impossible to deny the connection, to deny the feelings, even the synchronicities. That may be the clue here. Like, yes, I get it. I've been there. I've done that. And I feel like neither wants to go back in time and, you know, replace something out that didn't work out. Quite the opposite. I feel like I'm done with that. I'm done with the past. So, I love the judgment came out because to me it means you will be guided. The signs will be sent. You know, and if you fear 
that, you know, anything coming towards you or anyone coming towards you is of a negative nature, then there will be red flags, even more reason to have no blindfolds, right? So if there is a red flag, I'll see it this time. I'll notice it and I'll listen to it. But I really don't feel that's the case. I feel like I'm saying that more to comfort you so that you're more easily able to step into this. And of course, the choice will always be yours. But man, do I feel like this is divine's help bringing these two together. And what will you do? What will you do? All right, I'm going to leave it there, but I am going to read. I'm going to read love for Mother Mary. Sitting right next to marriage. Love. This card reminds you that feeling loved is your true desire. And this very condition is continuously offered to you by God, Jesus, Mother Mary, and the angels. Surround your current situation and relationships with love, which will loosen the bonds of ego attachments. When you pray for love to heal your situation, God sends angels to your side. Mother Mary counsels you to use loving words when you speak, think, or write. Avoid pessimistic discussions with yourself or others, as it's essential for you to surround yourself with the highest energy available. By doing so, you'll witness miraculous healings, experience new opportunities, and attract wonderful relationships. Well, hello. And then let's read blessings. And then we will let it be. Blessings. You receive this message as a reminder of the power of gratitude. Perhaps you've been feeling sorry for yourself lately or feeling as if God has forgotten about you. Mother, Mother Mary reminds you that your prayers are answered in many different ways and guides you to notice all the gifts and blessings you already have. Sometimes shifting your focus from what's wrong to what's right can make you notice new blessings that have been previously overlooked. This is a message of optimism, asking you to purposefully and consciously focus upon everything and everyone that you're grateful for. You can make a mental or written list daily, ideally, to train your mind to notice all the gifts you already have. By doing so, you're more likely to notice the new ones coming your way. This message also signal, signals that new blessings are entering your life as answered prayers. Amen, amen, amen. Gemini. I'm going to leave that there. Um, a lot of people. And, you know, it reminds me of your September reading. Um, you know, again, it may be like a continuation of it. Maybe you haven't made that ultimate choice. Maybe this is the month where it's literally showing up. And this is the month where you either say yay or nay to it. I'm hoping that you just feel the energy. Take off all blindfolds. You know, put down any walls. Trust your trust your intuition. Trust that loving nature of yourselves. Um, you know, much like me being a Virgo sun, but also a Gemini moon, Mercury can sometimes get in the way, you know, and that can play through our thought system. But, you know, I feel like you need to know that you deserve this highest form of love. But it's also, it, you know, it's showing us how you yourself have evolved, but also how someone else has evolved. So the similarities, I feel like, are off the charts. Um, synchronicity is off the charts. And I feel like, you know, with true love and past life relationship, the world, the lovers, and everything else we've seen, and all of this is happening in divine timing. Wow. That means I can let go and let God, 
let go and let God. Just be open to the blessings that I feel like I feel like you're ready for. Be very honest with yourself. You know, have I evolved? Have am I willing to take off these blindfolds? Can I put these walls down? Can I let this love in? That may be some of the questions you're asking yourself. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with asking yourself. But I feel like ultimately, this feels like the one to me. And you to them. So, I hope you allow yourself to have this rebirth. And again, I feel there's a lot of energy of you feeling this before it actually arise. And I feel like another clue was it does feel like it's coming through some type of communication. That's how it begins. That's just how it begins, my friend. All right. I'm going to leave that be. Um, you know, the reading was a little confusing just because we had a lot of people. But I feel like really what those people are representing are different people for different people. Different strokes for different folks. Um, but... Your spiritual team as the very last card, like present moment. I need you in the present moment. I'm going to send you the signs and that's going to help you feel more comfortable moving forward. If you so choose, allow yourself to have this rebirth, right? This new chapter will open up and man, it feels like a chapter I want to be in. It feels like a chapter I'm actually living in, you know? But, and that's why I get like the fear and all that beforehand. I had all that and I had to work through it. Actually, Sam and I both worked through it through communication over the phone before we physically came together. So I kind of understand the communication. But then I feel like ultimately the day will be where you are together. So I'm going to let that be, guys. I love you. I thank you. By the way, Stillers are on today. I have my Stillers shirt on. Um, I hope they win. It seems like every time I mention them, they lose. Um, but anyways, so just a shout out to my Pittsburgh girls out there. Um, and guys. I know there's some guys too. So anyways, guys, I'm going to leave that there. I love you. I thank you. Can't wait to read your comments. Um, you know, if you haven't watched September's, you may want to. Interesting, I know, I'm giving you all these readings. Like, all of a sudden, there's, like, homework, right? But you have a lot of the energy that Sagittarius also had. I can't remember what I named their title um, or their video. But also, I feel the energy of, like, that no contact. That, that person might be being faded away, and there's a lot of energies that relate back to that also. So those are probably the two I would say you may want to watch um, if you so choose, if you so choose. I know my readings are not short, so it, you know, it takes some dedication. <laughs> but like, like Temperance would say, patience is a virtue. I love you guys. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.